Hey everybody, this is Alex Fabrica coming at you again with another Teaching Tips Tuesday. Today I have with me Melanie Audet. You may recognize her from several previous Teaching Tips Tuesdays in the past. How are you doing today, Mel? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Also, you're a, you're an amazing TVI O&M here at FBC. I forgot to mention your title. I apologize. No worries. So uh, the first TTT I had you on, we were talking about the Trailblazers trip where we took a bunch of kids down river rafting in the Grand Canyon, but there were FBC has done challenge events before that. One of those, the Blind Buccaneers you attended, and I would love for you to come on and tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, definitely. So we went on the Blind Buccaneers trip back in 2018, and it was, we've been having these trips with Foundation for Blind Children for many years. The first challenge trip was taking a group of individuals with vision impairments up Mount Kilimanjaro. And so a couple of challenge events down the way, we decided it was time to teach students how to sail. And we picked the Spanish Virgin Islands and we taught 12 teenagers how to sail three catamaran sized boats. And they were around, uh, I think it was between uh, like 30 to 40 feet long. And we circled the Spanish Virgin Islands and we did it in about a seven day trip. And it was exciting. It was challenging. It was just a, a dream of a trip for these students to get to experience. I know profoundly little, maybe even nothing about sailing. How do you, how do you just at all prepare for sailing, let alone how do you prepare a group of visually impaired kids to sail? Well, it's pretty interesting. So we taught all of our students how to sail here in Arizona, which many may be surprised. We do have wind and water in Arizona. It's you got to look for it, but it's... it's <laughs> exactly. It's not just a completely dry desert, but it's not the Caribbean either. So we took our students to a place called Lake Pleasant, and we trained them for um, a couple of months in just how to how to be able to sail. So we were teaching them all of the basics and understanding things like jiving and tacking and understanding the concepts of turning and, and what you know degree turns are we going and being able to detect where the wind and where is our point of navigation. And so um, some of the ways, you know, sailing, it's, it, it's not something that maybe just somebody picks up. And, you know, they've always said smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. So we definitely had all kinds of different weather environments that we were able to practice in. It was really hot. Um, some days were really windy. Some days weren't really windy. Um, we also experienced some pretty, um, you know, heavy rain while we were down in Puerto Rico. But when we were in our training, we were teaching our students, how can we learn how to sail um, at, how can we learn how to do these things without using our vision? So we gave our students um, just, uh, some adapted little devices. So we gave like something as simple as um, a stick with a ribbon on it and then holding it up in the air, you can detect where's the ribbon going and that's showing you which way is the wind coming from and where is it going so that you can adjust your position to of the sailboat to the wind so that when it's hitting the sail, you're understanding how it's being able to propel forward. So just being able to understand. So we started off you know, we started off with showing the students every part of a sailboat. So we got to go to a sail yard where we were able to feel um, just every single part to be able to understand the mast, you know, the mainsail um, and understanding stern or bow or, um, you know, I'm trying to think port side and starboard. So we were learning all of those things. I might have gotten a couple of things wrong or so. It's been a little while since I've yeah. sailed, but it was just a really cool experience. Um, something that I, all of them had never done before. I'm picturing a lot of knots. I don't know if that's outdated, but I'm just thinking you're tying knots left, right, and center. Yes, we actually did a lot of practicing with tying knots because, you know, when you're sailing, you have these huge ropes and you need to be able to anchor things in. And we had our students do the whole process where every time we were coming, um, to just a port where we were going to stop. We were having them drop the anchor. We were having them tie the knots, tie the buoys, and teaching them how to do all these different types of knots. So that was a really fun part because that's all, that's very tactile and being able to do that. But it is a challenge to do it without any vision. So our students really overcame a lot of challenges with this trip. 
Absolutely. So getting more onto the trip itself, I'm sure you have some pretty interesting anecdotes and stories from the trip. Any that you'd like to share? I do. And I'm going to share my screen so I can show you a couple of pictures. So here we have our group. We took 12 students, um, 12 teenagers with vision loss. Um, ranging, you know, from anywhere from low vision to totally blind. And you can see we have our three catamaran sailboats in the background. And um, we took about eight staff um, with us and we were able to, um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm probably, yeah, we got about eight staff members there. Um, and we had uh, these boats. And so this particular day, you can tell it's raining. So we yeah. really got all different types of weather. Um, so this was our team and this was a cool story. So one of the challenges we did while we were down in Puerto Rico, um, when we sailed, we had a team come out and, um, give us snuba diving lessons. And so our students were able to go snuba diving, which is like scuba diving, except you're not carrying the oxygen tank. It's connected. It's on a floating little, uh, buoy on the top, but that was it quite an experience for me as I, I have never been underwater for more than five minutes, you know, or I can't hold my breath for more than 60 seconds. And so you're just down there and you can't really communicate. So the auditory information you're getting is just the sound of the ocean and the waves. Um, so in order to communicate like, Hey, I'm not enjoying this. You know, we were doing different types of tap, like tap once. If you're having a good time, Tap three times if you are done and you are trying to get back up because we had to really, we had to be careful because we were going down deep and you have to equalize your ears. Pressure, and all that stuff. The pressure. But that was, uh, for, for some students, that was really difficult and I can understand it. I was pretty scared and it was a really weird experience for me. But having some of our students be able to go down, snooba dive um, without having vision and to be able to go and explore the ocean floor was just really incredible for some of them. Um, also, here's a picture of one of our students who is um, who is captain on our boat. And she was, we had our students all take turns. So either manning the mainsail um, or maybe they were steering the boat. Um, another might be kind of, uh, you know, getting all of the extra line um, and slack and making sure that it's not just all over the boat for people to trip. So here's um, one of my students, Isabel. She was um, helping guide the boat. And so we would give her um, like the compass on an iPhone and put voiceover on it so that she could hear the direction um, changing in terms of degrees. So she could tell she's going 270 degrees. So she's, you know, she's going west. And so being able to understand her position to um the wind and the direction she was going so she knew the next time that she was going to tap she was probably going to turn more to uh you know maybe 45 degrees you know and being able to tacking is just when you're kind of approaching a straight line but you're having to do these turns because the boat isn't going to travel perfectly on that line um so that was another really cool way we were able to get put her in charge of taking us to where we needed to go is another one of our students um, who had the opportunity to come on the trip. And um, before this trip, he um, he was our youngest student. He had not been on a boat before sailing training. He had not been on a plane. And, um, you know, we were working on swimming. And, you know, there was all these new things for him that were intimidating. And by the end of the trip, he, you know, he was catching fish. Um, and he was swimming between the boats all by himself. And jumping off the sailboats, which is a pretty scary thing to jump from something that's sturdy into open yeah. water. And especially when open you air, first of all, when you can't see the water coming up beneath you. Yeah. You don't know what's in the ocean. So it was really cool to see just all of our students overcome um, just different obstacles for themselves. So those were just a couple of pictures. All right. Now I have another question for you, and I apologize for my personal immaturity. The poop deck. Did you guys have one of those? So we had a pretty good setup. So the hard part about the trip was, um, you know, was like dealing with the weather. You know, you're on a sailboat. And the hardest part was actually getting off the sailboat back onto land and trying to get your land legs back. I still felt for a couple of days, even when I got back to Arizona, like 
I still don't feel like I'm fully wobbly. balanced. Yes. Like I'm still wobbling. Everything's spinning still. Um, so that, that those were the hard parts. But we have pretty nice accommodation. So in each boat, there was four different cabins. So four different rooms. So they each had a bedroom. And um, on one hull, because it's a double hull, um, one hull would have two cabins. And then in the middle would be a bathroom. And then the other side of the boat would have two cabins with one bathroom and it was just like a mini bathroom so you think of going on you know like an rv there's you know like a tiny little mini bathroom and there's like a tiny shower um and then there was a um there was a toilet and uh there was just a system for make sure to press this button don't press this button and then when we get to the end of the trip we'll empty this guy out so uh, (laughs) all all i know is the water was clear and beautiful down in Puerto Rico, so they have a good system with with that. So, all right. But uh, question. <laughs> I think the poop dig is like old ships, like big galleons had it. I don't know. I have no idea yeah. what I'm talking about. So, I understand that there was a film produced about blind buccaneers. There was, and it. Um, we had a fourth boat um, that I didn't mention, but they were off, um, just kind of following us on the trip and being able to capture footage. It was a uh, a team of videographers and filmmakers and they heard about the trip and they wanted to come and be able to film it and um, to create a film just about these students and the amazing venture that they were on. So it's called Ocean of Obstacles and I will be sending you the link so that you can share it with all of our um, viewers and everyone watching so that they can take a look at the trailer. And it's also available on iTunes to buy or rent. And it's a pretty cool film to be able to see all of the challenges the students um, went through and just the challenges they faced in their life and how this trip really changed it, um, changed their perspective on a lot of things. And that link will be in the description of the video below. So I have one more question for you, Mel. You have already answered what your favorite part of your job is numerous times on Teaching Sips Tuesday. So let's drill down a little more into O&M. What is your favorite cane technique? Ooh, favorite cane technique, easy, is definitely constant contact. And I love using the rolling ball tip. I learned how to, I did my blindfold training with a marshmallow tip that did not roll. And we were taught um, predominantly how to use two point touch. And I was banging my cane against everything, probably breaking branches and bushes all over my college campus. But um, when I've kind of developed my own, uh, working on my lessons with my students, favorite cane technique. When I'm under blindfold these days, I do constant contact, rolling ball tip, That's it for me. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on another episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday with us today, Mel. Thank you for having me. It was really fun to share about this awesome trip. Mm -hmm. I'm really jealous of that one. We did not have showers of any sort on the Grand Canyon. So this (laughs) sounds downright luxurious. Yeah, it was it was definitely a different kind of trip. Had its challenges, but had its had its benefits, too. And I want to thank everybody at home for watching another episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday. As always, if you have a topic that you want to see addressed, please leave it below in the comments. I will try and find an expert to talk it through, and we will see you next week.